Dr. Ash. Thanks, Zach. I appreciate it. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about management of economically important insect pests of southeastern blueberries. Insect pests can feed on and cause damage to blueberries on every single part of the bush, starting from birds to flowers to foliage to stem, fruit, as well as roots. Here is a, a list of most uh, commonly found economically important insect pests of blueberries that we we often come across. This is not extensive list. This just includes uh, some of the more common insect pests. There is a large number of other pests that also occasionally cause problems in our blueberries, starting from uh, bud mites. As you can see, this table shows the timing of the, uh, the year or a crop uh, phenology when these become problem. Bud mites, they're primarily during the post-harvest. Sometimes they extend into the pre-bloom period, followed by scales and borers, primarily during the post-harvest, then gall midge and thrips during, you know, starting from pre-bloom all the way to mid-season, followed by thrips, aphids, leaf hoppers, and then you get into the mid-season and harvest period, fruit development period, cranberry worm, uh, fruit worm, cherry fruit worm, plum curculio, blueberry uh, maggot, and spotted wing bisophila. So I'll uh, give you some information on some of the selected pests that we more often get reports uh, from the growers. But if you have any questions about the pests that I will not discuss in this presentation, please feel free to contact me anytime. Let's start with the uh, blueberry bud mite. Bud mites uh, are uh, members of the Ereophyid family of mites. They have a small white, white body. It's about 100, 1 over 128 inches uh, long, really small. You really need to use a microscope to see them. Um, they are sporadic pests and more common in southeastern U.S. as compared to the other uh, blueberry producing regions of the country. Uh, they spend fall and winter under the bird scales, which uh, leads to misformed uh, flowers and fruit and poor yield in the end. Typically, few mites are present in each bud, but sometimes the numbers can be as high as more than 50 mites per bud. Control of bud mites is uh, very important when you have uh, high populations. Uh, it, the most important thing is that you monitor for these pests by collecting birds and actually opening up the birds to see what state they are and what their numbers look like. It's, in general, it's very hard to uh, control these pests if you don't time your applications of uh, chemicals uh, at the right time. Uh, so when you think about control, start with post-harvest pruning and removing the old canes that will reduce bud mite populations because they are in those buds. So when it comes to insecticide choice, we have brigade, danitol, savin, or verdant oils that can, can work. Killing uh, bud mites is not a problem at all. It's easy to control, but the problem is just making the right timing to actually bring the pesticide or chemical spray in contact with the bud mite because they are very protected inside the buds. It's always good to do sampling when you suspect infestation and uh, wait for the flagrant stage when these mites are moving from one bud to another to look for a new bud. That is when you, uh, you they come uh, in contact with the spray residue and get killed. It's always good to use high spray volumes with high pressure to cover all surfaces of the bush so we can uh, get uh, uh, to bring the pesticide residue in contact with the, with the mites. And overall, again, coverage and timing are the key to bud mite control in blueberries. Scales is another most common issue. Over the last several years, we have uh, seen more uh, scale infestations than in the past. 
Uh, one uh, reason might be that we are spraying more for SWD or some other pests, which are broad spectrum insecticides, and they are uh, harming our natural enemies in the field, leading to more of these secondary pest problems like scales. Uh, in, in our uh, blueberries in the southeast, we have a complex of several species of uh, scales, Scott Nicotian scale, azalea bark scale, maple leaf scale, and possibly other species also. In some field, infestations are really heavy, as you can see on, on this uh, in these pictures, that this uh, whole bush, whole uh, branch that is uh, showing here is loaded with the scales, with the females, uh, followed by those uh, long oviseps full of eggs. As soon as these eggs are going to hatch, the population is going to become even more and gonna, they are going to cause a lot of damage. We did some uh, trials uh, uh, in, in, in Georgia blueberries. Uh, we did uh, trials in uh, where we made a treatment application in November and also repeated the same treatments in August just to see what time of the year would be best to control uh, scales. And what we noticed, as you can see in these uh, uh, these figures that August applications were much more effective of the same product as compared to the November applications. So it is recommended that when you uh, have scale problems, try to make spray applications to control them uh, in, in August, right uh, soon after harvest when scales are still active and they are able to take up the residue uh, of the chemical. Uh, and, and during the uh, more dormant period, they're not as active and do not take up as much residue. That's why we are seeing some lower efficacy in some of these products. For armored uh, scale control, one to two per, uh, applications of 2% dormant oils is, is good. For soft scales, you have oil applications, admire, assail, or, you know, phosphates, or Sivanto uh, applications at color stage can be really effective. Again, Coverage is the key to scale control because they are uh, either uh, hiding under the park or can find other places to uh, where they are really protected from the spray application residue. So make sure to use high spray volumes to get good coverage of all parts of the bush to control all uh, the, the scale infestations. Sometimes infestations can be really hard to control. With one application, you may need to go back uh, a couple of times to actually clean up the, the heavy infestation completely. Flat-headed borers are another issue that uh, we, we get some uh, complaints from growers. Flat-headed borers are, you know, occasional pests of uh, blueberries. They're not in every farm, but they do become problematic in some situations. Adults are beautifully marked metallic colored beetles about half an inch long, have short antennae, large conspicuous eyes, really easy to identify. Damage occurs when larvae bore into the into the bore. As you can see in this uh, uh, picture here, uh, they, they they create galleries when uh, which may eventually completely girdle the canes, causing stunted growth or death of the cane. Adults are attracted to stressed or damaged blueberry canes, particularly in areas with pruning, uh, scars, or sunburn. So keep the blueberry bushes as healthy as you can and vigorous. That will help uh, lower the infestation from this type of uh, pests. Preventing bushes from mechanical damage, wounds, sun scaled, or, or drought stress can significantly reduce borer infestations. Once you detect borer infestation in the field, flat borers can be managed by pruning the bushes to make sure or remove old canes and uh, that exhibit water damage. Prone at a time of year and in a manner that prevents sunburn of canes to reduce water damage. After pruning, chip or remove the prunings from the field. If high levels of infestation are observed, uh, during the pruning, make a, a soil application of admire. That's your last resort. In Southeast, we generally don't need to do all that. If we can make preventative measures like uh, pruning of the suspected uh, infested, infested uh, canes and overall keeping the uh, bushes healthy will be sufficient to uh, prevent damage from uh, birds. 
Liberty Garbage is one of the major issues that we frequently see in, in our systems here. These are really small, tiny, about three millimeter uh, long flies. Females lay eggs in flower and vegetative buds as bud scales are separate. Late stage two is the, is the one when females are more commonly around there to lay eggs. Flower buds are susceptible in stage two and three which in, in case uh, February to March uh, in, in our systems uh, for rabbit eyes and up to 80% of the flower bud uh, loss can occur in some situations. Midge injury is easily underestimated just because of the timing of the year. Midge uh, aborted flowers, birds are readily mistaken for cold injury. It's just the timing of the year. Uh, Monitoring is important for for a gall midge damage, and it's really easy. You know, collect flower buds up two to three times per week, place them in Ziploc bags to monitor for larval infestation. Use Ziploc, uh, use double-sided sticky sheets, uh, or use bucket traps to monitor adult emergence. Maybe this pro uh, method, the last using bucket inverted bucket uh, traps, can be less efficient and more work. Just using Ziploc bags is a very simple way to detect infestation. If you have a heavy infestation, we don't have a real effective thresholds developed for blueberry gall midge, but if you have a, a suspect infestation, uh, diazinon, uh, an early application of diazinon followed by entrust or delegate may be necessary. Again, midge insecticides are protectants, as, as you know, these. Uh, uh, larvae feed inside the buds. They do not control existing larval infestation. Thorough coverage is, is extremely important. Flower buds stage two to bloom. Uh, fertilization is window of vulnerability. Stage two buds must be protected to bloom when weather is mild. Spray to protect birds you think can make all the way to, to the harvest. Petal fall uh, ap applications protect late blooms. Now again, since these are uh, larvae are inside the bird spray, timing is extremely important. Always be proactive in making spray applications to protect the stage two to three buds so you can actually prevent the females from laying eggs inside the buds. We did a study here uh, in Georgia to see if there are any early signs that we can use to be proactive in making those spray applications. We did some sampling of the um, uh, all uh, flies in this, uh, in this family, all midges, and what we found out that fungus gnat abundance peak two to three weeks before gall midge infestation peak at three different sites. We used the yellow sticky cards to do the sampling. So this serves as one sign that if you have those uh, in terms of timing and possible activity as well, that uh, if you have those uh, uh, fungus gnats in uh, uh, sticky cards on those sticky cards, then you will, in within two to three uh, weeks period, you will have a galmic infestation that sort of serves as early warning for you to get ready to uh, uh, make applications for galmic if infestation is suspected. Flower thrips, again, uh, comes right after blueberry gall midge. Uh, thrips have, there are several species of flower thrips actually in, in our blueberry systems that can feed on leaf and flower surfaces. They're active before, during, and after the bloom. Uh, and may move from, uh, you know, other flowers around the blueberry uh, uh, fields uh, to into the blueberries and feed on uh, internal flower parts reducing pollination and fruit set. They can cause up to 60% uh, of uh, uh, lower fruit set if high infestations occur. Uh, they can cause uh, tide curling and malformation of the leaves. And monitoring is, is again easy and important. Sample uh, two to three times per week when you are in that bloom period, beginning with stage three buds actually right before bloom period. Place the bloom clusters in sealed bags to drive thrips out. As soon as you put those uh, 
uh, cluster in the Ziploc zip bags, the tips will start to come out and you can uh, count those. And if you have more than two tips per cluster of eight flowers in this case, then you may need to start thinking about making applications. Again, diazinon, early application is, uh, uh, will be effective, followed by interest, delegate, a sale, or Sivanto in this case. Again, remember, we get only one diazinon application per season, so be very strategic on when you want to make application. If you have garment issue uh, more seriously, then go ahead uh, and use this application at that time. If you don't have garment issue and have more steps problem, then save this and use it. Excuse me. Uh, as at this stage, uh, first Danzinon application, and then follow that uh, by either and delegate or interest in uh, sorry delegate or a sale or Sivanto when needed. For organic systems, obviously we get only and trust as the only product that can be used. Again, uh, this is timing is very critical and very important because we have uh, lots of pollinators active in the field and we want that activity to make sure we get good uh, pollination. When it comes to spray applications, always adjust the spray timing to make sure you protect pollinators out in the field. Always make applications early in the morning or late in the evening to minimize exposure of those uh, uh, pollinators in the field. You know, gall mage and trips occur right uh, off, one after the other. We did a study to see if we can use actually those uh, um, gall mage applications to control trips. We made those applications during the, the gall mage, uh, when gall mage infestations were present in the field before bloom. And then we followed those uh, fields to continue sampling for trips. But we saw that the, these chemicals were effective, obviously, uh, for the uh, uh, initially, especially this Movento, Diazinon, and Delegate, they were all effective. But Movento in particular, it, it was effective all the way until 21 days after treatment. However, when we sampled for trips in the same fields, we did not see those, those, uh, that efficacy in remaining in those uh, fields from uh, applications that were made for galmage. This does show that if you have galmage problem and trips problem in the same field, you will need to go back again to make other, uh, make other new applications for trips control to make sure you protect damage from trips. Those galmage applications will not be helpful for tips control. You know, those are all the uh, pests that uh, occur here and there, one year, one field, and uh, another. But when it comes to, uh, you know, our biggest enemy, that is spotted wing pisophila. No matter where you are located, no matter what kind of system you practices you use, spotted wing is there. It's not only here in the southeast, it's everywhere in the country. It's one of the key pests of blueberries uh, everywhere across the country and now in many continents of the world. Whenever you have, a, a, as soon as you get ready to, uh, you know, uh, the blueberries get ready to uh, ripen, our fruit starts to change color, the susceptibility window starts. Female, uh, they start to, they have this uh, unique ovipositor that they use to lay eggs in the fruit and larvae feed inside the fruit and can cause, uh, bring uh, this whole fruit to a collapse in a very, in a relatively short period of time. This whole cycle from a larval uh, egg laying to uh, adult emergence can be completed in eight to 10 days at 25 degrees centigrade, which may be actually faster when we are uh, outside in the field at uh, relatively higher temperatures. So it means it can go through several generations to build up populations and can cause serious damage in our fruit. And there is a zero tolerance for this one. Threshold for this is one fly is too many. It's good to have uh, 
uh, traps out there to monitor. As soon as you find first uh, uh, fly in the traps, you have to start implementing programs. Uh, we did studies uh, uh, here in Georgia to see how, what times of the year the fly is active. We did trapping in the blueberry fields on, on the borders and in the wooded areas nearby. But we found that flies were active year round. We were able to trap them. Numbers were higher in the traps in, in wooded areas as compared to the field itself. It's, this does show that there is some uh, uh, wild plant species in the wooded areas that they can live off of. We did a follow-up study to see what was out there. And what we found out in terms of overall habitat, pines, uh, pine habitat around the blueberry fields had highest number of trap captures. When we looked inside the uh, pine habitat, understory is filled with several species of uh, potential uh, hosts that could uh, support SWD populations when blueberries are not out in the field. And these are, are very familiar uh, fruiting plants that occur in those wooded areas nearby, in the southeast, uh, nearby blueberry fields in the southeastern U.S. We did a study in the lab to see uh, which species of those wild uh, plants will actually be viable hosts of SWD, and we found that several of those species were actually a viable hosts where SWD was able to complete their development. We did, again, follow-up study to see how, when we did a choice test, to see how the flies would choose or what would be their choice when you have both, when they have both blueberry and the wild hosts available, and blueberries was their first choice, regardless of how many of these species were available, uh, and when given the choice, this does show that when you have uh, blueberries out in the field, that is their preferred choice, and we need to make sure we implement management uh, strategies to prevent the damage. This is the practice, you know, burning in the woods is, is a practice in some systems. And uh, we did a study, a short study sort of to compare, can this burning help with SWD populations? And sure enough, when we compared the trap captured from a burnt site as compared to an uh, unburnt site nearby, the fly captures were lower at the burnt site uh, after several months after the burn as compared to the unburnt site. So this can help at least uh, for the short term to lower SWD uh, populations. If you do or can practice this, maybe with something helpful to lower SWD populations. You know, when it comes to SWD management, we always start with biological control. Currently, we do not have effective biological control agents. A lot of research is going on, and the uh, permit has been applied to actually release and, uh, uh, exotic uh, natural enemies or evaluate them. As soon as those permits get approved, we will bring them out uh, and test them. Behavioral control, our team uh, funded by USDA NIFA through our SCRI project uh, is working on developing behavioral control strategies. I will show you a few slides to uh, just uh, to give you a summary of what uh, is going on on the behavioral control side. Again, our team on, uh, funded by, SW, uh, by USDA NEFA a grant uh, through OREI project, it has developed several cultural control tactics that can be used to manage SWD populations. I will show you those as well. However, chemical control is always the first thing to go to when it comes to SWD management. Just because we have zero tolerance in the market, we have the one fly is too many, we want to make sure we prevent the damage to the best. Luckily, we have a long list of products that are effective, as you can see in here. This is the most recent summary of uh, efficacy trials conducted in many in multiple states. And you have a really wide choice of chemicals to choose from when it comes to making uh, control applications for SWD in conventional blueberries. However, in organic uh, systems, we are limited to and trust and very few other products like Grandivo or uh, Piganic or uh, Veritrendi or others which are not as effective as we have in the conventional system. Here is a sort, sort of a, a, a brief uh, description of the programs. 
Uh, we have a variety of uh, programs depending on which market we have food is going to be sold and also uh, and what strategy is going to be used to manage the farm. So you, you have an option to choose from the programs. However, the question is, you know, what what chemical should go first? Uh, our, uh, one of our team members in, in Oregon and actually some other team members across the country did some trials to see, uh, you know, what, what chemicals would be appropriate to apply first in the programs and then followed by the others. In one case, they did a low efficacy products first, followed by mid efficacy products and then really strong products. In another program, they went with the strong product first and then low and then medium efficacy products. What they found out that if you use a heavy, a highly effective product first, they can immediately knock the populations down to the lowest levels and then you can basically make sure you won't get damage uh, uh, from the flies in the fruit. And if you use low efficacy print material first, then you still continue to uh, see those uh, fly uh, infestations in the fruit. So the best way to go is to use the strongest materials first and then follow with the uh, low and medium efficacy products to maintain those low level populations that remain. Again, same, uh, uh, those uh, model results were confirmed actually through the field trials in, in, in Oregon as well. Now, the problem is when we rely heavily on, on chemical control, we have, uh, uh, and those products are all uh, strong and uh, broad spectrum, uh, that they cause damage to the natural enemies as well. We, as you see here, we did some sampling and we found that in conventional fields, we had lowest number of natural enemies as compared to organic fields and the unmanaged uh, uh, fields or borders. So this shows some signs of uh, heavy products being sprayed in the field, which does uh, which do damage to, uh, or cause harm to the beneficial insects in the field. Studies have shown times and over again that these products are very toxic, more toxic to the natural enemies than the pests themselves in some cases. Even those organic products, which are uh, relatively less effective to the target pest, they can be very uh, toxic to the natural enemies as well. So we need to be very careful. With that in mind, we did some uh, test some programs, what we call best management program, compared with uh, those with the farmers standard management programs. What we did was we did uh, include some reduced risk insecticide in first year. We included uh, one reduced risk insecticide delegate. In second year, we did delegate and XRL2 applications of reduced risk product. And in 2019, we basically uh, included more delegate. We also included Grandivo and XRL and Grandivo. We just had one heavy uh, of strong material as a first application and then followed with the reduced risk products throughout the season. And our results show that those reduced risk uh, in, inclusion of those reduced desk into the programs did not compromise uh, efficacy of the pro of the programs. So they were just as effective as uh, standard grower programs. So th it means we can use those programs to control SWD and also release uh, make some uh, positive impact on the beneficial organisms. Now, when we have, again, uh, em an emphasis on chemical control, uh, the risk of insecticide resistance is, is always there. Insecticide resistance to spinosad in particular, especially in organic systems, has already been detected uh, in uh, California. And uh, we have, uh, for the first time in 2019, post-season, we did some assays, and we found this some low levels of uh, shift in LC50s. It means we are we don't have real high levels of resistance yet in Georgia, but we are starting to see some shift in the susceptibility of our field populations. So we always uh, uh, need to keep that in mind to make sure we rotate those products. You know, one application is one chemical class and followed by another class, and if possible, not repeat one class through the whole season uh, to control SWD. And we do have options to do that. 
you know, uh, when it comes to organic systems, we have this uh, list of products uh, that we, we can use, as I showed you earlier, and trust is the most effective one, but other products need to be incorporated as rotational partners to make sure we we maintain efficacy of and trust for a long term to come. Our uh, studies uh, show that again, and trust was the most effective one. Grand Evo was also effective, and Oxidate and Venerate were other materials that could be incorporated into rotation programs in organic systems. However, these products are not as nearly as effective when you look at the residual efficacy. Even after three days of application, we already are going have we have gone down to uh, as uh, to equivalent to being untreated control. So. What can we do to improve efficacy? We did some studies to uh, investigate activity of flies, sort of activity timing of flies. And we uh, found out that SWD flies are more active in the field during dawn and dusk times. This is one uh, 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 piece of information that we can use to, you know, adjust our spray timings to make take more uh, benefit out of the products that are uh, not as effective or don't have as much residual activity, in particular for organic systems. If we make applications during dawn and dusk times, that will be more effective and we can hit flies directly as compared to relying on residues and we know that our residual efficacy is low, in, especially in organic products. We also need to incorporate other uh, control strategies to make our programs more sustainable. Behavioral control strategies are one way to do that. And currently our uh, teams are working on two potential strategies. One is this SWD hook uh, or splat technology. It has shown some promise. It's sort of a slow release attract and kill formulation that has shown uh, efficacy in some situations. And we are still investigating to, to, to investigate the, to find out the details of how it works and how to optimize its use in the field. Another technology that we're working is a food-grade gum that reduces SWD overposition and fruit infestation under field conditions. That has been investigated in several uh, uh, cropping systems and has shown some promise. Uh, currently, its uh, registration has been filed, and once it becomes available, we will uh, bring this out, evaluate in the uh, spray programs or in other management programs and, and develop some recommendations of that. Cultural control strategies, again, are extremely important to make our management programs more sustainable for the long term. The premise here is that we what we do is reduce habitat favorability for the pest, in this case, SWD, which is very sensitive to, we know, to temperature and relative humidity in our blueberry bush when we look at temperature, is always lower in the middle uh, as compared to the uh, lower and upper portions of the canopy. The same way, relative humidity is higher in the middle as compared to lower and upper portions of the canopy. And when it comes to SWD flies, they always are more abundant and lay more eggs in the middle of the canopy where it's cooler and, higher and relatively humid as compared to lower and upper portions of the canopy. So this means we can potentially manipulate these two factors in the in the uh, blueberry bush canopy and the field to control or manage fly populations some. There are several ways to do that. Here are a list of some strategies we can do to manipulate the environment in the field to minimize uh, potential impact from, from this particular pest. For example, exclusion netting is, is sort of a foolproof. If done right, mesh netting less than one millimeter uh, fabric works to exclude flies completely, reduce infestation, and improve marketable, marketable yield in raspberries and blackberries. And for blueberries, it can control up to 100% of the uh, SWD infestation. It can be expensive to install in the beginning, but reward is, is there if uh, it works for the system, especially for relatively small farms. It may be more practical as compared to the large farms. Irrigation system, you know, the studies were conducted to compare uh, a rib irrigation as compared to the overall 
overhead sprinkler and drip irrigation was much better because in overhead with overhead uh, spray, uh, overhead sprinkler system there was more humidity in the field resulted in more fly emergence as compared to the fields with drip irrigation system so drip is better if you can mulching again uh, mulching is is uh, uh, very helpful for uh, the SWD control as well mulching especially with the uh, weed fabric uh, in mylar that uh, uh, provide a physical barrier on the ground, which prevents SWD larvae from entering the soil to prepare, increase surface temperature in some studies to kill the larvae there, and decrease SWD survival and food infestation in the field. Several studies have shown that it's a good way to do it possible. Again, studies were conducted on to do different levels of pruning, and should results show that heavy pruning altered the microclimate within the uh, canopy plant canopy that affected the habitat suitability for stability. Heavy pruning uh, increased temperature and light intensity in the canopy, decreased relative humidity, and which uh, led to decreased oviposition and fruit infestation. It may also, on the positive note, it may also uh, improve spray coverage within the canopy and harvest efficiency. Another factor that can be uh, helpful is uh, harvest frequency. When you leave ripe fruit out in the field, the field is more attractive and more flies actually go there and, and cause uh, uh, an increased infestation. If you frequently harvest, remove that resource from, from the field, the field became, uh, is relatively less attractive and results in lower infestation in the field. Overall studies show that Harvesting uh, every two days was more economical uh, in, in, in the, and helpful for SWD uh, control. Sanitation in the field is also important because leaving uh, uh, fruit on the floor, leftover fruit and cold fruit on the on the uh, on the floor, it rots and it becomes more attractive and serves as breeding ground for those flies. Leaving it's the best to take clean that and take that out. You can do that in many ways. Leave that uh, in a sealed container, that cold fruit, or you can put them in, in plastic bags in the sun for two to three days, or also you can bury them uh, at least two feet deep, and that will make sure that flies will not emerge from them. Plus, you know, once you have harvested the fruit and you have uh, suspect, you suspect that you might have some infestation, you can still do something which is to refrigerate the food at 32 to 36 degrees Fahrenheit, and that will do two things. Number one, it will, it will prolong their development time, so you will have more time to market those berries. Or number two, it will kill most of the larvae within the fruit. So it is the best way to sell a clean food if you suspect infestation, use them, use the refrigeration to after harvest to keep the fruit clean. Just to summarize, SWD uh, remains to be the key pest as adult flies can be trapped year round in our southeastern uh, blueberries. The wooded areas seem to serve as population reservoirs for SWD. The number of wild species present in those wooded areas can serve as viable hosts of SWD. Burning in the woods can uh, reduce SWD populations, at least in the short term. A number of conventional insecticides are effective against SWD. However, we must uh, uh, rotate those uh, chemical classes from one application to the other to minimize uh, insecticide resistance. And if possible, include more reduced risk product to lower their impact, negative impact on secondary, uh, sorry, on beneficial insects. Majority of the SWD activity occurs during dawn and dusk, so making spray application timings uh, uh, during the, those times will help uh, increase overall efficacy of the spray applications in the field to better control SWD. Now, uh, even though we have lots of uh, options, chemical options to control SWD in organic system, uh, in conventional systems, Management of SWD in organic systems is a challenge. 
a combination of organic insecticides and cultural and behavioral strategies may be necessary to control SWD effective. Um, well, um, you know, beyond SWD, we do have uh, secondary pests that we need to deal with. Always leave if SWD effective products that are going to be used for SWD. For that uh, harvest time, and SWD is going to be present, and use other materials to uh, uh, to control other insect pests during the year. Other pests uh, include bug mites, scales, gall midge, and flower thrips that are most uh, important secondary pest issues. Uh, for those secondary pest problems, frequent sampling is necessary to determine infestation levels and control applications. Not all of those will require spray applications if uh, infestation levels are lower. A number of insecticides, including uh, you know, so oil applications or other, uh, are effective against bud mites and scales. Other insecticides, such as sale and the new product, Sivanto, Centaur, Movento are effective against most of the secondary pests. Spray timing and coverage are key to good control of uh, a number of secondary pest problems. Always try to use higher spray volume to get good uh, coverage. That will help control the target pest and uh, improve efficiency of the spray applications. With that, we have lots of uh, resources to use. Uh, created for you to use. You know, this uh, uh, Southeast Regional uh, Blueberry Management Guide is one. It's available at uh, smallfoods.org. We update it every year. It's up to date information all the time. We have also created this MyIPM app that you can use to get uh, information about specific tests and possible options to control. Uh, we have uh, this Blueberry blog that you can go sign up to receive updates. We do post uh, on the, you know, season appropriate uh, issues, and uh, you can get uh, updates from there as, as well. We have developed this as, uh, extension bulletin, a very detailed information on organic management of SWD. If you're an organic grower, you might want to uh, take a look at that. And if you have any more questions beyond that, please feel free to let me know. With that, I would like to thank you for taking time to listen to my talk, and I'll take any questions you may have. I would also like to thank our uh, uh, collaborators, uh, our uh, growers, uh, extension agents, and also uh, funding agencies that support our programs to bring uh, to do this research to bring information to you. Thank you all very much.